Hello everybody, this is Matteo and I am the developer of the Confi UI IP Adapter Plus extension. This is a follow-up to my previous video that was covering the basics. If you are new to IP Adapter, I suggest you to watch my previous video first and then come back here for the advanced stuff. Let's start with the new features. This is the base workflow that we all know and love, nothing special about it. If I want to use two images, I need another load image node. Then we can connect them with a batch image node, like so. And it works great, but what if I want to give one image more weight than another? So in that case, I have to use another node called IP Adapter Encoder. I can connect the images to the new node instead of the batch images node. And if you look closely, you'll see that I can set a weight for each image. Let's try to give the first image more weight than the other. As you can see, this node only outputs embeds and we don't have embeds in the apply API adapter node. So we actually need a new node. You can drag the embed in an empty area of the workflow and select IP adapter apply encoded. So this node will replace entirely our old one. So we can delete that and we can connect the IP adapter back, the model. And this time we have to connect the clip vision to the encode IP adapter image node. Now we can give it a try. First I'm going to add some noise because it helps with the generation. And as you can see now the image is slightly closer to the first reference than to the second. I can try to lower it further or I can try to do the opposite and give this one more weight than the other and it works pretty well. You probably noticed that there are only four slots but you can actually send a batch of images to each slot so I can add another image and I can batch two of the images that will have the same weight and then connect the batch again to the encoder. So in this case these two images will have a weight of 1 while the first image will have a weight of 0.6. So you can actually have as many images as you want, but you are limited to four weights. I think that it should be plenty enough. One thing to remember is that if you select any plus model, you also have to set the IP adapter plus option to true. Before I go any further, I believe it's worth reiterating on the importance of the prep image for clip vision node. In this case, the reference image is a square, so prepping it wouldn't be technically needed, but the clip vision encoder uses by default bicubic interpolation, while Lanskos is a better algorithm. Let me show you the difference. I'm going to connect the reference image directly without the prepare node and see the result. Now I'm duplicating this node. Now I'm going through the prep node. So the image is scaled before going into the encoder. As you can see, the difference is little, but the image that was prepped is slightly more defined. You can see it in the eyebrows, in the eyes, and in other small details. You can also add a little bit of sharpening if you want. Very little usually makes a huge difference. And now the result is even sharper. So we haven't really talked about all the IP adapter models. Let's go through all of them. The base one uses four tokens to describe your image, even though it's actually eight because it's four for the positive and four for the negative and it's good for catching the main characteristic of an image. If I want to get any closer, I have to use a plus model that uses 16 tokens to describe our image. Let's see the difference. So now the result is a lot closer to our reference. The actual style of the image is dictated by the main checkpoint. So if I change the model, I should get a different style and depending on the subject one model might be better than another. Another interesting model is the light version of the base model. 
the light is useful when your prompt is much more important than the reference images and it is different than using the base model with a lower weight like 0.2 as you can see the image is still a little bit burnt and anyway it still tries to keep the original composition while with a light model I can set the weight back to 1 and get just a hint of the reference. Also you'll notice that the image is much less burnt, so I can set the CFG scale a lot higher, which is always nice. Another interesting model is the plus phase. It is a model trained to describe faces. It is not a face swap and sending two pictures of the same person is doing no good. All it does is to describe as close as possible the face that you give it to it. Let's see a few examples. Let's start with this one. This is not a bad reference. We have to crop the image to the left. And since the model is only describing the face, we have to lower the weight and describe a scene. In this case, I want to keep it simple. So I'll just put portrait of a man and I'll add some security measures to the negatives okay let's see how it goes so the result is decent but not stunning let's see how the image is actually cropped by previewing the prep node this is what is actually sent to the encoder and we want to keep the attention only to the face so to do that we can try to crop the image better I have a crop image node. Let me try to center the face better. Now the face is all we have in our reference. I'll pass the new image to the preprocessor. And as you can see, the result is much better and a lot closer to our reference. Let's try another image. This is a very bad one because the face is covered by the hair and also there's a hand on the way. So the result I'm sure won't be great. We have to crop to the top. That was terrible, but we have to tell there is a woman. Okay, well, it is better than what I was expecting. It's basically a black and white picture of a woman with long hair. Now let's see if we can do any better. Let's send this to the encoder. It is certainly better, but the reference image is not good to start with. So let's consider this a failure. And uh, one last example. And this is what I consider a perfect reference. We just need to crop to the top and this will be probably great. We can lower the CFG as always. Try another seed. And this is a good example of what kind of image you should send to the face model. All we said about the SD15 models is true also for SDXL. There's only one thing to be aware of and that is that the base SDXL model needs the SDXL clip vision encoder. The difference is basically the size the clip vision is trained at, but it doesn't necessarily grant better results. So depending on the subject, the SDXL model is either extremely good or terrible. So you got to experiment a little. All the other SDXL models, the ones ending with VITH, all require the SD15 clip vision encoder. And as you can see, even if we use the lower resolution encoder, the result is pretty good. And then of course we have the plus SDXL. We have to enable the plus option in the encode image. The difference between the SDXL base and plus is not as marked as the SD15 base and SD15 plus but as always you'll have to experiment so next we are going to talk about time stepping 
So technically there's no time stepping for IP adapter, but we can kinda simulate it with a case sampler advanced. Let's say you want to make a cyberpunk woman based on this fantasy image. I can try to lower the weight quite a bit and add a cyberpunk woman in full armor as a prompt. Let's see the result. So this is not very cyberpunk. We can try to lower the weight even more, but we are going to lose a lot of the source image. Now it is cyberpunk, but there's very little of the reference. So we can try by using a second key sampler and we connect this one directly to the load checkpoint node instead of the IP adapter. Then we connect the first K sampler to the second. We enable the return with leftover noise option. We disable add noise in the second K sampler. We stop the generation at the sixth step and we start from the sixth in the second K sampler. Set the weight pretty high because we are using this weight only for the first six steps. Let's see what we've got. Now this is what I'm talking about. The image is very close to the reference but now it is cyberpunk. It is very burnt so we have to play a little with the CFG and probably we can lower the weight a little bit more. Let's try another seed. Okay, let me try with another reference image. I have this drawing and I still want a cyberpunk woman, but with this style. I'm going to increase the weight and let's see what happens. Let's try another seat. Anyway, this time we were able to keep the style of the reference and do something completely different with it. And you can get pretty crazy results with this technique. So I encourage you to give it a try. And as last thing, I want to talk about Animate Diff, because IP Adapter can be very important in keeping the stability in your animations. So here I have a very standard Animate Diff workflow. The yellow nodes are the control net. I'm loading a series of images that I resize and then pass through a line art preprocessor. The purple are the Animate Diff nodes, as first pass, I limit the animation to 16 frames to be sure that everything is fine and then I will increase the batch. So now that I have this cheering frost giant, I am extracting one frame out of the animation and using it as reference in the IP adapter nodes. So this is my frame, I connect the animate diff to the IP adapter and the IP adapter to the K sampler. I will increase the frames to 32 and now I can run the final animation. Of course I have already rendered the animation and this is the result. Here on the left I have the original animation without the IP adapter and here on the right I have the animation redone with the IP adapter enabled. As you can see in the chest area, there's a lot of noise compared to the one with the IP adapter, which is a lot more stable. Also the hair is very noisy while it is pretty stable here. And especially the background, there's a lot of noise while it's rock solid here on the right. But anyway, this is a very simple way to add stability to an animate diff animation. Now, as you know, animations take a lot of VRAM and there's a little trick you can do with IP adapter to spare about 1.2, 1.4 gigabyte of VRAM. Instead of using the apply IP adapter node, we are going to encode the embeds. So I connect the image to the encode IP adapter image and so the clip vision. I'm also adding the noise. I'm using a plus model, so I'm selecting IP adapter plus. And then I'm using the IP adapter save embeds node. The embeds are saved under the embeds directory inside your output directory. I'll call this uh, frost giant. 
I'm not executing anything else from this workflow, so I am disabling the case sampler and all this workflow will do is to save the embeds into the output directory. So now that they are saved, I can remove the clip vision, the load image, the prepare, the encode image and the save embeds. I can use now the IP adapter load embeds. This node expects the embeds to be moved into the input directory. So move the file that we just saved inside the input directory. And if you refresh, you should find the embeds into the drop down. Now we need the IP adapter apply encoded. So we connect the embed, the IP adapter and the main model. We can reactivate the case sampler. So by doing so, you are not loading the clip vision and this should help with the VRAM a little. Before executing this workflow, remember to stop the conf UI server and restart it. So all the VRAM is restored and run the workflow again. So this is all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you found it interesting. I know that there's some interest in the IP adapter training script. As far as I know, there are no UIs for training IP adapter. So a tutorial about that would be just me typing on the command line. I don't know if a video is the best platform to do that. Maybe a written article would be better. So I'll think a bit about it and see what I can do. In the meantime, if you have other topics you want me to cover, just let me know and see you next time. Ciao.